Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be with you here in beautiful Cannes. Maybe you could begin with a brief introduction to your film. Tell us a bit about what it's about and what people can expect when they watch it. Yeah, so Agra is actually a film about sexuality and sexual repression and the idea of physical spaces and how both affect each other, how our sexual lives end up affecting our physical spaces that we live in and how the, uh, how the physical spaces in turn end up affecting our sexual lives. And the story is told through the eyes of this 25, 26 year old protagonist called uh, Guru who is, lives in a strange house uh, with where his father lives on the upper floor with a mistress and he lives uh, on the, on the uh, ground floor with his mother and sleeps with her in the same room and uh, it's about him trying to talk all the, uh, about all the repression that he feels within, the, within, the, within his house and simultaneously trying to express himself in ways that he cannot and it's a strange odyssey that he goes on from there and, and it's about what happens to him. And it does feel like, I don't think I've heard a story like this told on screen before, it does feel like something fresh or whether that's because it's quite taboo or it's like a different gaze that we normally have on, on issues like this, like seeing it from this male perspective, this frustration. What initially sparked the idea for you and why did you feel like it was an important story to tell? Yeah, so, uh, you know, my uh, after I finished my first film, Titli, I sat down and I asked myself and I said, what is it that I really, really feel like talking about? And I realized that when I was a young man and adolescent, even running into my later years till about 24, 25, I had myself felt this strange sexual repression and I had felt like I was not able to express myself. Yeah, you could say with women, but in many other ways, you know, uh, being, being in such close-knit large families in India, you do not getting, uh, end up getting enough space. And I started thinking about that and I, and I started asking, because it, I, I felt like it was something that I was strongly feeling about uh, and, and I was wondering why no one talks about it. Mm. And it was not just me, I had seen many other young men struggle with it around me to, to almost, uh, the, almost as difficult an extent as, as Guru, even though I had personally, it had not been that difficult for me. But that sort of set me thinking and I asked myself, why does this happen? What, what is the reason? And what is specific about India that this happens? And that's where, you know, the idea of space slowly emerged. And I felt that, that uh, 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 very, very interesting, that connection, because that immediately opened up a very large socio-political, cultural context for me for why this was happening. And I realized that, you know, with, with this atmosphere that we live in, where the rich are just now getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and uh, everything is just, you know, keeps on going up, up. It's, it's just vertical, mm. and uh, and uh, it's almost phallic, you know. Mm. It's it's a it's a phallic rise that you see all around, all around you. So somewhere there, I think the idea emerged, and I always had a feeling that it was important because I had felt it to a certain extent, and I always end up trusting myself as a filmmaker that if I'm feeling something strongly, there are people out there who are probably feeling about it as strongly and it's a conversation that needs to be had. And how did you choose, you know, your amazing cast? I think that was a great word you used, you know, go, to go on this odyssey with you, creating, you know, and there's some very difficult scenes to watch and everything does, you know, it's very physical um, and, you know, it's quite, quite hysterical. See some of the sex scenes as well, like not, not easy ones to shoot. So particularly for your protagonist, how did you find the right actor and how did you kind of build a sense of trust on set to be able to pull off these scenes? So yeah, as, as, far, as, uh, as far as finding the protagonist goes, I think we were really lucky because we actually, so we auditioned for about six months in five different cities in India. But to be honest with you, we had already found him in the second week. But, but I think because filmmakers are so greedy, we kept on looking, yeah. the search was on, but Guru uh, uh, Mohit, the boy that you see in the film, we had found him in the second week of our audition. And uh, eventually what I do is I usually do a three month workshop for, for my film. And in the first month, I always have options for every actor. So I had three gurus and three of every characters uh, playing in the workshop. And eventually I realized that uh, I had three very good actors, but there was something really necessary that uh, 
I thought we needed to pull off a very difficult part like Guru, which was A, I didn't want the actor to be physically very imposing and B, he, he needed to have a certain innocence about him, a certain watchability about him for you to be able to stay with such a difficult guy who was doing things that were really difficult to accept through these two hours. So I think that became one of the key reasons why we went for Mohit. And as far as I think creating trust on set, I think most of that work is done during the prep of the film. So we had such a long prep. We had a three month long workshop with the actors where we even went ahead to the extent of doing some naked workshops with all the actors where literally, you know, no one was there, including me in the room. The, the whole key crew there was there without clothes so that we could just shed our uh, inhibitions of our bodies because how else could you do it? We were attempting a film about sexuality and sexual repression. It had to start with everybody uh, being comfortable with their body, nothing more than just a tool that we were using to express these rhythms, to express these feelings that everybody was feeling. So it was, I mean, I just talk about the naked workshop as, as one exercise. But it was a bunch of exercises, it was a bunch of, uh, you know, improvisations, creating the characters' lives uh, that, that, that they had lived till the point of day one of the film. So I think a lot of that work also comes from every actor knowing what is the life that they have lived in, in, in its full essence uh, till where the film begins. So a lot of that work, I think, helps you feel like they're in, they're in their skin, so to say. And talk a bit about the sort of importance of the locations, because of course, you know, one of the key themes is this idea of space or lack of space. So of course, capturing that, but also the fact that it's in Taj Mahal, but we're not seeing the usual uh, monuments and buildings and the things that people recognize, but you know, instead, you know, the presence of this hospital um, and, and kind of like making that jump somehow that, you know, being confined in these houses almost makes them madhouses in, the, in their own way as well. Yeah, I, I mean, a film like this has to be shot on location completely. It cannot be any other way. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, 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 one, also one of the things is that we were we were trying to go for as as much of a phallic and vulvic symbology as we could put in the film so that you see whether it's in the design of the spaces whether it's in the costume whether it's in the production design we wanted the whole film to be laden with the, that sort of symbology so uh, the production design itself was very tough for a film like this because we didn't re we weren't really finding the spaces that we that that we wanted so the internet cafe, for example, that you see in the film, that's been made from scratch on a location that was literally like a hole in the wall in the in the middle of a busy marketplace. We eventually found just like a raw hole where from scratch we built that international uh, internet cafe because I also wanted it to open out for the room at the back, almost like a vagina, you know. So it's like a little passage that opens out with a sack. And I wanted you to almost get that feeling as you walked in uh, subliminally for you to be walking in that kind of a space. So the internet cafe we had to, because we didn't find that architecture or, or that layout anywhere else, we had to create it from scratch. The house, we had to make a lot of changes to the house uh, because we wanted the lower floor to be cramped and not to have a lot of light. I mean, the only little light that you get on the lower floor is from the grill upstairs. The, it was also important because the lower floor almost needed to feel like a hole where the mother was stuck. And in comparison, the upper floor was the mistress's little fiefdom where she has her garden and it's open and that's how she wants to keep it. So actually the upper floor, when we found the house, was completely closed on one side. So we broke the walls and we also wanted a little bit of the depth on the other side because we wanted to see the neighborhood and and make the story feel like the story of the neighborhood too and not just this house. So a lot of work uh, like that went into, you know, the designing spaces for the film. And in terms of what you think people can take away from watching it, I mean, as we said at the beginning, it's such uh, it's a topic that just hasn't really been shown on screen and not discussed. So I guess in the one sense, hopefully it can sort of spark conversations because when it comes to issues of mental health, anything that's repressed or not spoken about, you know, is, is half of the problem. 
Um, but I also wondered, you know, do you think it, it, it's controversial in India, like, to, you know, even this film itself? Do you kind of, do you have any trepidation about how it'll be received? Well, no. So, so to answer the last part first, I don't have any trepidation. I, I don't think, I think I let go of it when I started working on the film because I think once I end up making something, it's really in the audience's hand. And for me, once the film is out there, it's the audience's conversation with themselves. I think my job is is to reflect some sort of truths that I see around me and that I feel around me. And if it's a difficult truth and if it makes an audience uncomfortable, I think it really reflects on the lives we are leading. And it really needs uh, more reflection on the audience's part if, 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 if they feel like it's uncomfortable as to why they're feeling uncomfortable to have that conversation with themselves and amongst themselves. I don't think it's so much a conversation with me anymore. I've had my share of the conversation and I've put it out there. And now I feel it's in the audience's hand. And also, you know, to answer the other part of your question, I think the, the one little, little trepidation that I do have is that I think it will be very easy to to look at this film uh, as a film about mental illness because it's a difficult character and the moment you look at it through the lens of mental illness you're easily able to other the protagonist and say oh you know but he's he's not okay he's he, he has a problem so he doesn't become you whereas i think my own stand if you ask me is that if he's mentally ill then the other people in the house, the so-called sane people in the house, are way more ill than he is. He, he, for me, is the sanest guy in the house because he's at least being honest about his repression and he's trying to talk about it. In fact, he's the only one who's trying to talk about it through half of the film. And he gives up uh, half of the uh, way through the film and he says, OK, fine, if you don't want to talk about it, and if all that matters to you is the transaction of the relationship and the transaction of just having a house and the safety of having this house where you want to live for the rest of your lives, fine, so be it. Let's play that game. But <coughs> but for the first half of the film, he's really the the one who's, who's fighting almost solo. And um, I guess, like with all sort of storytelling, you know, it's so specific in, in terms of the, the character and the story itself. You were talking about an issue that, you know, it's perhaps not not completely unique, but the sort of the reasons that it's an issue in India are, are specific to that place. But of course, there's many universal issues that can be drawn out of it. You know, is there a, a wider problem with men in society? You know, whether it's the UK, Europe, anywhere about you know what does it mean to be a man in today's era? What does masculinity mean? If we do away with toxic masculinity, what place is it? Um, so and, and you know like especially when it comes to things about sexuality you know like people like the, the way people watch so much porn but no one even talks about that so it feels like there is something broader going on in society that surrounds some of these issues so even though it's a specific story it can have some universal impact too absolutely and that's why i wanted it wanted to approach it from the human emotional core of this boy's journey. I mean, it, it's, it's, I completely agree with you. It's not a specific cultural problem to India. I mean, men in many ways, the, the world is built for men to be in a specific place. And hence, patriarchy in its various forms is everywhere. You know, it's not just India. And the relationships between a man and a woman play out similarly. They might have some cultural specifics, but they are very similar everywhere. So it is trying to engage with you at a human level and talk about these patterns, these rhythms, these uh, other base desires. Uh, I, I mean, what are the other myriad desires that are generated within uh, a physical union, within, uh, within a man and a woman coming together? Uh, you know, there are so many other kinks and deviances at play, which are play, which are at play everywhere. So, I, yeah, I think the attempt is to talk about that, uh, the, 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 the universality of, of, of relationships between men and women. And finally, you know, what does it mean to you to have your film here at Cannes? Um, and, and I know you had your first film here as well in 2014. So does it feel kind of you know, right for your film to be at this festival. And do you know what you're going to be working on next? It's it's always a joy to be to be at Cannes, and it's a, it's a very big joy to be back at Cannes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mainly because uh, 
you are in the middle of other uh, international luminaries you are in the middle of uh, some of the harbingers of cinema and uh, it's always very inspirational because you're coming back and you're seeing uh, the best of cinema, but the best of world cinema that's happening right now. So I think it it inspires you, and it personally it 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 gets me, you know, almost kicking again, raring to go again. You know, let's go, let's make another film again. So so yeah, it's always wonderful to be to be at Cannes. And as far as the next one, uh, it's called Dispatch, uh, and it's already in post production. I shot for it last year, so it should be out uh, coming out soon. Thank you. Just tease what it might be about in terms. So of dispatch is uh, is set in the world of crime journalism, and it's about this 52-year-old crime journalist who who is fast feeling defunct in the world of uh, digital journalism, and he's desperate to break a big story, and due to his own personal greed and desire and uh, 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 his own fragility, he ends up uh, getting involved with some people. Who are way above his pay grade, and it's about this uh, strange odyssey that 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 he goes into into the city of Bombay, uh, trying to trying to negotiate the corridors, the opaque corridors of power. Well, that sounds fascinating as well. <laughs> and just very quickly, how do you see the health of cinema in India? And I guess festivals like this are amazing because you do bring you know filmmakers from all around the world. Um, but of course, you know, the festival is not the same as the broader cinema landscape. So how do you see the health of it in India? I think we are at a very, very interesting juncture. I think the, the landscape is shifting. I don't know whether it's shifting for the good. Independent cinema is slightly struggling in India right now. Uh, I think the space for independent cinema is shrinking, definitely. Uh, I think the OTT platforms were seen as some as a, at some point three or four years back as the saviors of uh, indie cinema, probably everywhere, not just in India, but specifically in India, we were hoping there would be a wave of some sort of content once they come in. That's not really happened. So, yeah, I think <clears throat> I think the next few years are are are, are going to be interesting and. And we'll see which way it tilts. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me. I'm really enjoying presenting your film here in Cannes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.